Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, I'm going to cover a problem that uh, one of our members uh, sent to us. And uh, the gentleman's name is Lynn. So Lynn, if you are listening, I want to uh, really thank you for this problem. And I have the title here, which I think is kind of catchy. And it says 1940s math puzzle problem. Okay, so that's the title of this video, 1940s math puzzle. So uh, this gentleman, Lynn, uh, remembers, and he thinks it was back in the 1940s, this particular problem. And he actually kind of recreated the problem uh, with a sketch. And now, uh, of course, you know, it's been many, many years since he's seen this problem, but he definitely had kind of like the, the pretty good amount of details. I added in and enhanced his figure so we can kind of see you know, exactly what's going on here. But here is the problem, and this is an excellent problem for those of you out there that uh, have a pretty decent knowledge of, let's say, high school level geometry. So I'm not going to give you too many clues here, but I do want to explain the problem. So here we have a circle, and you can see we have some uh, sides and some dimensions going on. What we're looking for is to find the measure of x. So that's this little piece right here. Okay, so we're looking for the measure of x, and uh, these lines right here do go through the center of this circle. Okay, so the rest is kind of self-explanatory. Again, I don't want to give you uh, too many hints, if uh, any hints, because I want to give you a full opportunity to uh, take on Lynn's problem, uh, which he, again, thought he saw way back in the 1940s. But this is an excellent problem, so I think you'll really uh, enjoy this. So if you can figure this out, you're certainly going to want to pause the video and work on this for a little bit. Uh, probably take you, you know, maybe five, ten minutes. Maybe some of you will not see the path forward. Of course, I'll explain all of this in just one second. I'm, I'm actually going to show you the right answer, and then we'll go through the solution to this excellent little problem. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, a special thanks to Lynn for sending me this problem. Okay, so what is X? What is this distance right here? Well, let's go and take a look at the answer right now. So you should be somewhere around 2.2. Okay, you can kind of round off, but that is what uh, X is equal to. All right, so again, this is approximate uh, value, but you're, uh, we're coming in around 2.2 for the answer. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, I'm pretty sure Lynn would give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and multiple stars as you solved a problem way back in the 1940s. Now, as someone who um, obviously studies a lot of math, I actually have a pretty extensive library of math books ranging from Oh, way back, say, in the 1960s. I think I have a couple from the late 50s. But uh, it's interesting to see how math was taught throughout the years. And uh, really, uh, you know, when you think of, um, you know, learning something like mathematics, you're like, well, is newer necessarily better? You know, not necessarily so. Okay, of course, we try to improve, you know, on knowledge that we already know. But some of the, like, kind of old uh, techniques and approaches to teaching mathematics are excellent, okay? And I actually try to bring those in. And, uh, you know, when I'm looking to teach something, I often refer to older math books, okay? Particularly like in the 1960s, because if you um, kind of reference your uh, history, the late 50s, especially when the space race begun in uh, the United States, really uh, the kind of the STEM uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics really kind of revolutionized in the school system in the U.S. And so you really kind of see a lot of great improvements in uh, math textbooks uh, in the 60s. But anyways, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here, but this is the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, when uh, Lynn actually sent me the uh, problem, his sketch, I really didn't see the solution at first. Okay, now I don't want to, um, you know, take credit for figuring this problem out if I didn't see the path forward. But we do have to. I did have to add a couple important details here. Okay, so when we're looking at this, uh, some of the things that weren't in uh, Lynn's uh, sketch was this is a rectangle. Okay, it appears to be a rectangle. It's touching the sides of the circle. 
But we do have to make uh, clear that this uh, quadrilateral, in other words, it's not doing, uh, it's a rectangle and not something maybe like uh, like this, okay? Uh, so you can kind of see here, this would be like a trapezoid. So that would kind of affect uh, the path forward. But nevertheless, here is a, um, what I, you know, uh, believe I put in all the necessary details for you to look at the right path forward, okay? So uh, just to be crystal clear about it, 5.45 is this uh, the measure of this distance from the circle to this point, and then 5.45 is the measure from here to here. This uh, rectangle is, in fact, an actual rectangle. And then, of course, we have uh, this uh, distance right here, this blue line, uh, which, again, is 12.5, right? So it's 12.5, 12.5. So what do we do here? Okay, how do we go forward? Well, we are looking for this measure x right there. This is what we're looking for, this distance, all right? So how can we get that distance? Well, if you're thinking, well, the only way to get this distance is to find the radius, right? So in other words, here's the center of the circle. We're going to need to know the radius, and then I'm going to need to know this side of the triangle. If I take the difference, I can get x. So probably most of you out there are thinking along those uh, lines, and that would be excellent. And that is what you should be thinking. But how do we, you know, how do we get that? We, how do we get the radius from this information? We have this triangle. Um, it goes from here to here. It's not touching uh, the side. But if you look, what you do see, if this is a rectangle from the center out to the edge, is this right here is actually the radius. Okay, so for those of you who may not have seen this, uh, this is the radius. Actually, let me write that in a different color. Uh, just uh, so we can all see that, this is the radius from here to here. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, no big deal. I see that's the radius, but we need to make an observation here. Because this is, in fact, a rectangle, okay, we need to understand that the diagonals of a rectangle, and this is also a rectangle right here. You see, I have this as a right angle, so this would be a right angle. So this is, in fact, a rectangle. And this is congruent. This is a current. Basically, you just need to understand that and see that this is, in fact, a rectangle, right? Or a parallelogram or a type of rectangle. But nevertheless, what you need to understand is that the diagonals are congruent, okay? So this blue line, this diagonal of this rectangle right here, if this is 12.5, well, this radius right here from this uh, red line is also 12.5. Okay, so again, the basic, uh, you know, high school level uh, geometry concepts. So that's like the first step. So I think if you um, recognize that, you're like, oh, okay, this diagonal is also 12.5. Well, we have some right angles going on here. We can kind of see, hopefully, a path forward. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, let's go ahead and continue on. But actually, I'm going to encourage you, uh, some of you out there that if you're saying, oh, okay, now I see maybe the path forward, you know, uh, pause the video and see if you can figure out the rest of the prompt, okay? So, uh, you know, that's what I would encourage you to do. But anyways, let's continue on with the problem. All right, so now that we know that this uh, red line, okay, this is the radius, is the same distance as this blue line, we're talking about the diagonals of this little rectangle right here, well, then we can kind of get some additional measures here. So if this distance is 5.45, and again, I told you this was the center of the circle. Well, if we know the radius, this red line is the radius, right? So from here to here is the radius. I know this distance. I know this distance must be, what, 12.5. Well, then I can uh, calculate this distance right here. Okay, so from here to here is going to be the difference of the radius, which is 12.5 minus this green uh, thing and or this green distance, excuse me, and we'll get this leg of this right triangle in here. So let's go and do that now. So 12.5 minus this 5.45 will give us this distance right there. Okay, so, you know, we're talking about pretty basic math here. So 12.5 minus 5.45 is 7.05. All right, so now we're kind of uh, proceeding on here, and this is what we have so far. All right, so we have, we have this right triangle. We have the base is 7.05. We know the radius, obviously, is 12.5. 
we know that this leg, the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 12.5. So this is 12.5. This is 7.05. We're dealing with a right triangle. So what can we use? Well, hopefully you remember uh, the Pythagorean theorem, which is, again, we're talking about high school level geometry. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And I know this side of the right triangle, I know this side of the right triangle, what I'm looking for is this distance right here, and we can find that using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So here's that triangle, kind of, I uh, kind of broke it out this way so we can see more clearly what's going on. We're looking for this distance. So remember, this is the hypotenuse. That's always going to be the C squared. So X squared plus 7.5 squared is going to be equal to 12.5 squared. And here you can see all the lovely number crunching that's going on. So we have x squared is equal to 1 point, uh, I'm sorry, uh, x squared is equal to 106.5475. Now, again, if you were rounding off, you know, uh, during the course of this uh, work, it'll, it'll affect your answer a bit. Okay, so that's why I kind of gave you a wide, you know, give, just gave you the answer. It's 2.2. So if you got a little bit more refined answer, that's perfectly fine. But here we have x squared is equal to 106.5475. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, and uh, that will give us x is approximately equal to 10.322. So that's that distance right there. Okay, so now let's go back to our figure, and here we know this distance, 7.05, this is 5.45. We are looking for this distance right there. Now we know that this distance is 10.322, okay? So I have this distance. I also have the radius, which is 12.5, so if I find the difference between those two, I will get this uh, little distance x, which I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So 12.5 minus 10.322 will give us a decimal of uh, 2.178, but I'll just kind of round that up to 2.2. Okay, so again, special thanks to Lynn out there and his recollection recollection of a problem, an excellent math problem that you know we're talking maybe like 80 years ago. So you know, uh, for those of you that, you know, don't really um, you know, have uh, much knowledge of, say, math history or how math was taught, you know, a lot of people tend to think, well, you know, we have all these computers today and this technology, you know, there's uh, so much amazing stuff going on. But I'll tell you, uh, the history of mathematics is just mind-boggling of how many intelligent mathematicians, absolute geniuses, you know, have, um, you know, existed through time. And hopefully that's kind of obvious to you. You know, people like Pythagoras and, you know, Euclid and whatnot. Without these folks like Newton with calculus, we would not have our modern day technology. Okay, so a lot of these concepts and principles have been around a long time. But uh, anyways, I thought this was extra special because uh, this particular problem, you know, is an interesting uh, little exercise. And again, you know, concepts that you would learn in, let's say, like high school level geometry. OK, so if you enjoyed this uh, video, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.